these are slides. The, the first couple slides I'm just going to show, they're actually from my uh, presentation at Graphonicon a year ago, the first you know, 10 slides. But you can, if you want to actually see everything I was talking about, but just to give you some context of where, where I came to Grafana from, it's from uh, working at, uh, uh, hydro, on a hydroelectric turbine. Um, so we had a turbine that was installed. When I came to it, we had an interface that looked kind of like this. If you're in the industrial space, this is a really good looking interface. Uh, but, you know, from here you start making modifications to it and, you know, you add some panels to it that look like this. So this is the, these are the panels I saw when I got there. I was like, ooh, Jesus, what are we going to do with that? So uh, I found Grafana and, well, actually with that, that was all written in its factory talk, which is Visual Basic, which I used to poo-poo, but I'm coming around to actually think that, like, calling Grafana the new Visual Basic is actually, it's like a... It's a real compliment, but uh, you know, I'm not quite sure how how to how to say that. But I, I think that's without me punching you. No, but but if if you're as successful as Visual Basic, you're gonna be like, oh, I guess we're doing okay. So, so this is Visual Basic is how these things get made. They're amazing because anyone goes and makes them. Any engineer pulls it together. But so we took I took that one you know, threw some stats in, in FlexDB and suddenly had something that looked really nice, scaled, people could use it. Uh, but then it was like, how do you do some stuff? Like, I need to see some images while that's happening. How do I do that? And so I quickly sort of ended in the, the drive to add custom things pretty quick, because out of the box, Grafana gives you so much that's really good, and with just a little bit more, you can do other things. I've probably gone too far. Um, which you'll see in a second. So if you ask, is it possible, I'll say yes. Is it a good idea? Torque will say no. Uh, but you know, that, that's where we are. So this is this is, you know, where we started. Um, so I made this panel that was very general, saying like, how could I add anything to it? So it was, uh, we'll add some AJAX, which just make some request and put it in there. Um, I'm gonna get out of this, and now we're gonna go flying blind here. Let's see, where's some. some uh, so the Ajax, this is a, is this really small? Yes. Let's do, um, we'll go back to displays. Sorry, just, uh, just to increase the font size, the command plus in the drops. I know how to use computers too, I swear. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, this is the Ajax panel that I had built um, as a very general, um, uh, let's see, general, so you have an HTTP source, actually let me go to the examples down here. So these used to be tabs, they're now at the bottom. So here's a simple example that you click on that and it loads uh, sort of some, some examples that you can have. So here's a URL to some text that's stored someplace. It's a get request, get the responses text, you need credentials. What parameters do you want it? So a JavaScript blob to set whatever parameters. Like this is aiming for the most general, how do you put whatever there without writing any code? Uh, some parameters onto that. So that generates this query that has the from to how big is my panel? Uh, do I need to set some headers? Similarly, you get a JavaScript blob to ask that. Variables that are available. So if you're in template variables, those can all be passed through. Um, so when I get that back, how do I want to display the results? Do I want to see it? Is that, should that be coming back to me as HTML? Is it text that I need to escape? Is it uh, text that's already pre-formatted? Um, do I want it as JSON? I don't know what text does, nothing. Uh, or is it an Angular template? So all kinds of options here once it's a template. So this is a plugin that was aiming to be as general as possible to throw whatever you needed into it. But it's kind of a terrible way to actually develop things because then all your logic is in, in the, like panel control. So, you know, great because it will work, but really hard to maintain. And once you've done anything useful, so then I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll dive more into the uh, uh, the other part. If you're using this, because there, there's an enormous number of options, there's a whole set of example configurations of like here's a service that goes to. Where does it go? It goes to HTTP bin and shows you what your requests were and spits that back. So there's a whole bunch of examples that will help sort of show what options are, because instead of documenting, that's what I did. Um, so results from Grafana API, 
and let you put them into a template so you could put whatever you want. Um, so this was one path that I took. Um, and then over time, I'll skip to kind of perhaps the more, um, so this is, uh, I'm showing you a test facility that, um, this is the, like we've gone and this is, this is the far end. We ended up building an application on top of Grafana, which has a whole bunch of custom panels, some custom pages, and we drive a, a turbine based on it. This is a test facility that's currently offline, but uh, you know, to start the controller, here's, here's a bunch of, uh, um, let's see. So here's, oh, we'll see if the internet's working well enough and the VPN. And I may move on to something else if this doesn't load. Yeah, look at that. All right, I'll show you something else for a little bit. Um, that, that may come back for a bit. So, uh, you know, on the list of what's possible, so, that, so we built uh, custom panels, uh, application that have whole pages. Um, no, it's still not loading. This is not local. This is in Alameda. Um, but all right. So um, I've also have a. So recently, after spending a lot of time with Influx and you know various databases, there's you know a realization that you you know the the past is the future. I'm not sure how we say that, but I'm coming back to saying like, why don't I like store everything in flat files because they can't get broken. They they're accurate. They uh, they're cheap. Um, a lot of what we do are, I would say, transition data. Like I, I, I have real-time operating system that knows exactly when something changes. Changes are really important to me. Uh, all like existing monitoring databases really focus on like send your metrics at this time. But realistically, we have you know no changes for hours and hours, and then you know. A thousand changes in 30 seconds, and then no changes again for another few hours. And to get the resolutions right of like when are you doing high resolution, uh, I've ended up using I would say just a custom, very simple CSV format. So text file here that you can see that's you know here's a timestamp state uh, value, um, or actually this one is a, this is a regular CSV that's a table. And then another one that's a, a version of just, uh, we define what a field is, and essentially just a write append-only log that says when the variable changes. What's good about it is it, you know, it's an append-only log, which has enormous benefits for trying to keep it safe over time. Uh, and then we index it, and you get to play with your trade-offs of, of uh, how often you sample and how you do roll-ups. Um, but, um, to keep this working, I've kind of built a, um, let's see if this one works, essentially with a naming convention and flat files on disk, you've got a query language, just a, a theory, haven't really worked it out yet. But so here's a panel that goes to a file system. Um, I can browse that, that changes some uh, template variables, which then shows it in a table down here, so if I select a certain day, I'll load CSV file down here. Um, I'll edit this one and maybe change the visualization. So this is a table now. If I switch this. Now I, now you want to see more? Yeah. OK. Uh, let's see if we do graphs here. Um, query. Yeah. I'll pick a. You've basically done a CSV data source? CSV data, it's just a CSV file on disk. I can load it. I know that every line in it represents an actual transition, um, which is super useful. So here's, you know, if I look at this one, I think has very simple examples. So changes, edit. How is the file accessed? Uh, through the. Um, through the backend server, so it's a there's a data source here. Is it a backend? No, no, it's had to 
fix some stuff. So it's a <laughs> the fix. fix. There's Grafana, Grafana was insisting that the slashes that exist were only the ones that work. So eventually that yeah exactly. So uh, so this is essentially this data source that shows me you know stuffs on, on online for five minutes and goes off for a few seconds periodically. Um, it's in, nice because my actual data represents the only the changes. Um, so that's kind of this discrete panel came out of that need of, of knowing, like I need to show the state of something. Like you can represent it as ones and zeros and then a graph that changes. But this has always been a really important part of our workflow. Um, um, let me see if, so other custom data sources that I've worked on over time is, um, Let's see. Are these pure plugins, so you made changes to the core? Uh, the th everything I'm showing you so far is our plugins that I've published on, published and pushed to the Grafana community plugin database. Yeah. So on one of the dashboards for the Turbo, you showed, uh, or at least I saw a panel. I thought that it had something like clear alarms. That was. Uh, that's custom, totally custom, and in an internal thing that, unless you're talking to my PLC, isn't going to do anything. Is it literally rendered in AJAX, like through AJAX? No, no, that is a custom. That is a totally. Yeah. So. Great. I, I, one of the things I, I've been interested in doing is issuing commands from the Grafana dashboard, and I've never found a way that isn't like embed a web page in the Grafana dashboard. Uh, if you so, you can create a data source that doesn't even know what time series are, and you can use, sorry, he's like, he's shaking his head over here of like, who's doing this? So you can create a data source that just points to an arbitrary uh, HTTP endpoint, and then you ask for it, and it goes through the proxy, and it passes all the authentication along, it's great. Like, you get to use all the same things, even though all it's doing is hitting an endpoint and spitting stuff back in your own format. We then, that data source, again, over time, like, this trade-off of how custom, like Grafana is super powerful because out of the box it does everything. So I've built a custom data source that you know, knows what my PLC schema is. It knows what the translation to an influx schema is. It knows when I'm zoomed in really close, I want to get the raw data from these CSV files. It knows if I'm zoomed out a little bit, get it from this roll, it, and if I roll up. And if I'm zoomed out way far, get it from another place. You know, you can see the nightmare I've created for myself, but <laughs> it's not, uh, or, well, actually someone else, but, uh, but, but through this whole process, I've tried pretty hard to like keep the parts that are usable and push those out because, you know. So in the panel, how are you, I've never, okay, never done plugin development on Grafana, but how are you responding to mouse clicks? In the panel, you, I mean, it's a, it's a div. You go. You you have full access. You will in React too. It's like it's you just. It, it is. You should think of these panels like really as the opportunity to do whatever you want in this box. Uh, and how like currently in the Angular system, you have within that box you have access to everything, with some caveats in Grafana. As we move to, to Angular or to, to React, the contracts around what you're allowed to do are getting more constrained, which is really a good thing. Uh, it, it, like, it, it will help a lot um, that if you're importing things, it's explicit, et cetera. So that's a huge, it's going to be a huge improvement. But right now, from the panels, you can do whatever you want, um, which, is, which is great. It's amazing. So. Um, where was I? Uh, I was going to show you a little bit of the developer environment. Um, so, yeah, this is this is my developer environment. It's a bunch of you know you'll see a bunch of plugins here. Um, let me see. Uh, just, uh, two minutes. I think we have two minutes. I mean, I could, I, as you can see, I could talk about this forever with zero uh, focus. But, so. Uh, um, oh, yeah, this did load. So this, these are kind of interesting. So we have faults, internal faults. So these run in a real-time environment, but our management and control of them are all managed through a 
Grafana uh, interface, just because I don't want to push another interface when we're already using Grafana. So this is like, a, uh, if I want to set when the powertrain proximity is too close, what are the thresholds at which it should alarm? Like, when should it tell me something's wrong? These are not running in Grafana. They're running in a real-time environment, but we manage them through Grafana. Um, um, similarly, we do our documentation for all these variables. This kind of comes automatically from this. So if I have a water temperature sensor, this is like my calibrations of what's there, what it's wired to, what's the hardware it's attached to, uh, you know, what color are the wires going to it, the labels on them. Uh, is all kind of linked together, and we're using Grafana as that. So this is like, I'd say, the extreme on how far you've gone down the rabbit hole. Um, but the value of kind of keeping these, the, the, what's general, I would argue the more we can publish that and share it. Like the value, I mean, my company makes money from selling a turbine. They don't care if, uh, <laughs> you know, about the graphics of displaying ones and zeros. Like they, so, I've had a good time with it. If you could be Visual Basic, we, I think it's all. You should strive for that. Is what I'd say. So. Thanks, Ryan. Bye.